Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sarah Martin with The Contoured Chemist. All right guys, it is get ready with me day. We have a new shade of the month and it's September. So I am itching for fall weather, can you tell? Except it's still hot here in the Midwest. <laughs> so I thought let's do a transitioning from summer to fall makeup look because I love me some fall looks, but we're not quite there yet, but it is September. So if you are in the mood for fall, let's go ahead and we're gonna try to do a transitioning look. We'll see how it turns out. If you wanna check it out, please keep watching. If you wanna see the new shade of the month, hopelessly devoted, I'm gonna show you how to incorporate it in this look. Be sure to like and subscribe. And as always, thanks for being here. guys if you are excited about this shade of the month or if you don't know how to wear it let's talk about it so if you don't know the shade of the month for September is a previous shade we've had before and it's called hopelessly devoted and it is in my opinion unlike any other shade we've ever had as a lip and cheek. And if you can't tell, it's very light, okay? So I'm gonna show you different ways to wear this and I'm gonna incorporate it in our transitional look here because I feel like the cool tones of this mixed with fall tones of a fall look is gonna create a really cool balance to go from summer to fall. When we get to this part, I'm gonna swatch it with all the things and show you what kind of makes this one very different. But let's go ahead and get started with my makeup. I have not done anything but skincare sunscreen. So I am wearing just my glow screen, silicone free, so I get the best longevity. And I wanna do a quicker look today because I'm on a time crunch this morning. It's nice and rainy, but I've got places to go. So let's go ahead and prime the eyes. And I'm gonna kind of talk through a quick face and then we're gonna do a fun eye look. I'm in the mood to do something different because I am itching for fall. So I figured let's show off the new shade of the month and incorporate it with a fall look because I feel like it might not look very fallish on its own, but we can make anything look fallish, right? So I've got my eye primer on, I fused my lash by lashes, and I've got my perfecter prepared. So now we can go in with makeup. I am gonna go ahead and go for a quicker application and just pick up my blush bronzer brush. And you guys, I really need to melt this down. It's probably the next thing on my to-do list. Here's my mango I've been using for this quite a while, if you can't tell. And it's all stuck in the corners, but I'm gonna melt it down soon so that I can not have to work so hard to get it on my brush. Because right now, I would dip into the color next to it if I was to keep it in my palette. So I'm just gonna buff this on. I'm having an okay skin day. I'm not super red. Um, so I'm just going to buff it on the high points of my face real quick to match the darkest tone. So my whole nose, again, I just barely have any in here. So I'm dipping in a little bit more than I normally would have to if I had a full pan and I could just touch it once because I know it's, oh my gosh, it is downpouring here. If you can hear that, that's the rain. <laughs> Why is it always rain when I have like, I have like appointments or like need to run errands? Why? It's always my luck. I love to run errands when it's like beautiful and sunny outside and puts me in the best mood. No. Anyway, I'm going to go in with now the blend brush. So that way I can be a little bit more strategic. I've got 
all of my darkest points met, but now I'm gonna go in and press on some to those smaller areas where I know I need more coverage. So where I have blemishes, where I might have missed some darker points because I really didn't apply it along my jawline. I just went here in the center and then I've got darker points of hyperpigmentation. I like to get around my nose where that brush really can't get in well. I love me my blush and bronzer, but if you need more coverage, all you have to do is go press on only where you need it. You don't necessarily have to press it on all over. I've got certain points that have a little bit more texture. The most important thing is making sure that those textured areas have your darkest shade. That is what's going to help anything else lay better on the skin. Okay, so let's color correct my eyes real quick. just going to use 3D to get today because I'm in a hurry. Usually <laughs> that's my deciding factor. Um, if I'm using any Demi and I just stuck my finger in my main shade. Okay. So again, I'm going to go fast today. So I'm just going to keep with that blush bronzer brush and just do a light even out my skin tone all over. Same thing, pick up this brush and do all the small areas that I might have not reached very well with that brush. Oh, I wish I could turn the camera. Our new kitten is getting a bath from Champ, our 10-month-old. Um, they are finally not wanting to kill each other. <laughs> and he finally decided he likes him. It's his little brother, half-brother technically. They have the same mama. Oh my gosh, that is so cute. The kitten is just like sleeping on the chair and his big bro is giving him a full on bath. They are so cute. And I am relieved that they're no longer fighting <laughs> or growling or hissing and pouncing on each other. If you hear that in five minutes, it's possible. I love it. I was hoping they'd be best friends. All right, and just like that, I'm done. You can tell, I, I I mean, I don't look like I'm load like wearing a load of makeup. This brush can get anything from light to medium to full coverage. It's just all on how much you're picking up, the motion of the brush, how you're using it. But I still want my skin to show a little bit more. This baby will come in and be able to do that because I'm still not done. I'm gonna go ahead and contour. Um, Gonna use Astoria, same method I always do. Pounce in and then press on. So I'm just pressing along that imaginary line and then pressing upwards to blend so that I am not moving anything underneath it, but I'm just building up coverage there where I have redness and hyperpigmentation already. Don't want to emphasize anything, just want to kind of hide it, right? That's all we're trying to do is emphasize what we want, kind of distract from what we don't. Forehead, I'm 
Just pushing it up into the hairline, pulling it down to blend. Jawline is up underneath the jaw. And then again, down to blend. I'm gonna do a quick nose by just using that very edge of my brush. I don't even know if you can see it. Okay, and then that, that way I can use this straight edge to give myself help to draw a straight line. Because we can only use help in that area, right? Maybe it's just me. I suck at drawing a straight line. Sometimes I just flip it over and then use small end to kind of go up towards the brow, darken the tip of my nose, and then hit under my lower lip to kind of give the appearance it's poutier than it really is, right? Now, I'm gonna go ahead and bronze. I don't feel like I need a whole lot today, but I wanna do it before blush so you can see how that limited edition shade looks um, and see how it changes the color. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of, this is Bella, this is Glow, and this is Heat Waves. I don't feel like I need to look darker, so I'm going to skip Heat Waves and just lightly swirl into the Glow and Bella, okay? Now, as long as you're not like really pouncing and you don't have a fresh Bella, um, Bella's super creamy when you first get it. You should be able to get an even distribution on your brush. So you're not going to have to blend too much. Cause if you touch your face and get a big, you know, glob of bronzer, then you're going to have to blend. And if that was an area you used color correction on, you're most likely going to move that corrector and then lose coverage. And we never want to lose coverage. So after I apply that color corrector, every other motion of the brush is more of a pressing motion of those areas I color corrected. Now, if you didn't color correct on some areas, you could do more of the swirling motion, but like my blush and bronzer is always a pressing motion. That is gonna help me not move that product around. That's why we press the high, main highlight and even that accent brightener on afterwards. We're not wanting to move stuff that we put exactly where we want it. So I'm gonna use just a touch um, of my brightener, which is Aura. I'm just here, let me take it out so you can actually see the motion. Now this is an old one, so it's pretty dry by now, but I'm just going to, I, you can tell I dip into the same spot every time. Slightly tap in, and then I'm going to tap right there. You can barely, you probably can't even, you can barely see it, up to that contour stripe. Okay, I'm going to kind of hit right here. I'm just going to kind of hit right here where I'm the darkest. Okay, so we don't necessarily have to go all the way up to the lash line. That's where I have all of my my fine lines and wrinkles, right? So I'm gonna mainly concentrate it right here in this area, okay? So you can still get that brightness, that light to the center of your face, but you're not gonna emphasize and put as much product there. Now, if you have shadows, that's a different story. So I sometimes will take it and pop that right where I have a natural shadow and it's it's a natural contour of my face. I have more of a shadow here than even on this side. It's probably even more apparent because it's so dark outside right now. So you can see where I have the sh natural shadows and where I'm darker, okay? So use, the, use your face as a guideline, okay? Avoid the areas of texture. Know that where you put this lightest shade and emphasize the areas with the most texture. So if you have the most texture right here, avoid it. Just go to where you have, if you're wanting to actually disguise 
bags or contours around your eyes, you have to go to the deepest part of the shadow and apply the brightener there in order to trick the eye and bring that forward, okay? So light brings forward, dark recedes. That's why this looks like more of a shadow. That is darkness we added there to make it appear like it's going inward. Whereas here we want to make it look brighter. So when somebody tells me, how do I disguise bags? It's all about placement of your accent brightener. You wanna fully color correct it and you that way this will actually sit on the skin well. Um, otherwise, if you just go straight in with this, most likely if it's darker, it's not going to actually brighten. It's gonna sit not as pretty, okay? So go for where you have depth, shadow, okay? Your shadow's out here, go for it. If you have more crow's feet in that area like me, avoid it. It's up to you and you can play with it, experiment, see which way works best, right? This makeup is so fun to play with. Okay, so I'm gonna take a little bit down those two stripes of contour. The highlight is what actually will slim the nose, keeping it light and bright here on the side of the nose too. Now, this is an area of texture for me I don't put my brightener there because why this will emphasize that area. So I avoid it. Just avoid those areas you don't want to emphasize. So I'm done with my face and now I can perfect so that we can finally get to the lip and cheek shade. But this is highly important because I layered shade. The only way I can make this not crease is to remove excess. So if you don't know, our creams do not set. They will move with the motions of your face through the day, which is a good thing because they won't crack like traditional foundations. They don't dry down, evaporate, and then whatever pigments left can crack as your face is moving. Since they move with your face, it's awesome. But it can mean that if you don't remove that excess, Excess creams can migrate to, where are they gonna go? The valleys of our face, which most people, it's gonna be around the mouth where they have maybe smile lines and around the eyes because our eyes and mouths move the most, right? Most of these other places, you might even get creasing if you have um, deep spots on other areas of your face. But this bad boy will remove excess because the only way to get off excess with this product, because it doesn't evaporate, is to actually remove it. So if you're heavy handed and you're having issues with creasing or feeling sticky or tacky, um, you might need to look at using a different brush that maybe picks up less product. Um, because once it's on your face, you're just gonna be moving it around. It doesn't matter how well you blend. This is the only thing that can actually pick up that excess. And again, can't be dry, it's gotta be prepped beforehand. Too wet will pull off your makeup in patches and you're gonna lose coverage. And too dry and it's really gonna kinda just press it in slightly, but it's not gonna really pick up excess cream to eliminate creasing or looking heavy or my favorite is making it look like skin again because I love the coverage this gives but I don't want it to ever look heavy on my face. I want it to look just like I naturally have this glowing radiant skin, right? At least that's my goal. Everybody likes their makeup differently. I totally get that, but I still recommend using this. If you don't want it to look like skin, if you like your makeup a little bit more full coverage, you, maybe you don't wanna have to use the perfector across your full face, I'd still recommend it under the eyes and anywhere you have those deeper lines to help prevent creasing. It also is the best way to prevent ever looking cakey, which is what happens when you have too much cream and then you add a powder on top of it to set it. So I always, as soon as I perfect, I go in with my powder, okay? So I'm just gonna touch it, that's it. Just barely touch it. For me, that is the perfect amount. 
powder is something I feel like you definitely have to do a little trial and error to figure out which powder will set your makeup and not look like you just powdered to where it's looking heavier, cakey, or dry, especially around the, the under eyes if you have mature skin like I do. So vanilla dust is nice, finely milled. I can use just kind of excess after I do that to kind of hit those areas I want a little bit more matte. Now it's not a super mattifying powder. If you have oily skin or you like a matte look, I highly recommend picking up a loose powder. But for me, I just use the least amount possible under the eyes and I get a nice powder base on the eyelids so that way I can blend my eyeshadow. Okay, so I didn't apply powder anywhere I'm gonna put my lip and cheek or my illuminator um, so that way I don't have to worry about any kind of texture with that. It's time for the fun part. Let's do a little swatchy swatchy. I will be honest, this is the hardest lip and cheek ever to swatch. Okay, so if you actually look at it, you could probably tell by looking. It's very cool, okay? But you can't tell. You guys know how deceiving they are in the tin. It looks really light in the tin, right? It's very light and sheer. Okay, so when you swatch it, it almost, in my opinion, looks like an illuminator, okay? So you're not gonna get this pink pigment. Now, when you layer it enough, you're gonna see that underlying cool pink tone. Do you see that? Okay, so in my opinion, unless you are Snow White level fair, you're not gonna see any pink on your skin, okay? You're going to use this as a topper. Now, you can use it by yourself if you, by itself, if you like maybe just using a little bit of bronzer for warmth on your cheeks and then using this in order to catch the light. Even really dark skin tones like women of color can wear this and it literally almost looks like beautiful, like light reflection, right? Because it's so much lighter. It shows up on darker skin tone, probably more so than uh, you know, somebody like me with medium skin tone where it's going to show light, but it's not because it, it's cool, right? My first question somebody asked me was comparing it to Angel Illuminator. And I agree because this is Angel. Angel is our pink illuminator, okay? And this is Hopelessly Devoted. Now, Hopelessly Devoted is more cool because it has that white... I would say icy shimmer, okay? Let's put it next to Angel. Okay, now right off the bat, I will tell you, I feel like our illuminators have a different kind of shimmer than Hopelessly Devoted, okay? Um, any of our lip and cheeks. Our lip and cheeks almost have, I don't know, the shimmer in our lip and cheeks is almost, it stands out far more. I feel like our cream illuminators have such a finely milled kind of just a little bit of light reflection, but can you tell the difference of how much light this one is reflecting? And one of them that came to mind was actually one we had not too long ago. They probably, they don't look like themselves in the tent. They don't look alike, but kind of reminded me of the chandelier we just had, which was a limited edition illuminator. I think because of the cool undertone. Now this one though was iridescent. Now I don't consider hopelessly devoted to be iridescent. It's just more of a, so this is chandelier. Do you see how different they reflect? This one has just got that purple because it's an iridescent shimmer. This one is more of, it's gonna give just that natural glow. This one is still more shimmery. <laughs> it is extremely light reflective. So let's see what it looks like in comparison to pearl. I'll be honest, I never use pearl because pearl is very 
icy on my skin tone, but let's just see what pearl looks like. Pearl is our most cool cream illuminator. It's usually best for those with really cool undertones, like an icy highlight. Okay, it's, it's, it's very white in comparison. But look how it does not reflect light the same as Hopelessly Devoted. Okay, so I hope that kind of shows you how different they are. Because even though I feel like when swatched, you're, a lot of people will be like, that looks like an illuminator. The shimmer is very different. Okay, um, yeah. like an, a wet looking highlight. I've never recommended our cream illuminators because they give more natural glow. They're, they don't give that like pow, <laughs> that pop of really like wet looking here. I've always recommended our powders. Our powders are actually what gives that. So if you actually look at, let's just see, Go Amazing. Go Amazing is our most, okay? This, let's see. You're not gonna put it on that heavy, obviously, but you see the shimmer in that is more of that wet, that more, it's, it's highly more, Highly more shimmery. I mean, come on, Sarah. Can I not describe anything today? It's a lot more shimmery. This is going to give you that pop. So I'm going to show you it as a blush slash illuminator all in one. Because I do feel like this is a topper shade for 99% of people. But it really can give that look to your cheek to where you can be strategic about applying it kind of like how we did audrey if you remember that was a really light shade and so if you're darker like me you probably had to use it more of as like a way to add brightness and light to your lip and cheek um this can be used in the same way so i'm going to show you how we can get a fall look with our blush and then pop this on this is going to cool down anything right you guys agree that that's going to cool stuff down it's very much a pale pink shimmer with a cool undertone, icy highlight. All right, so hopefully that is descriptive. It is nothing like any other lip and cheek we have. First of all, we don't have very many shimmery tones. Um, I would say the closest would be Carousel as far as the undertone. Carousel um, is much less glossy. So Hopelessly Devoted is much more of a glossy shade. Um, Carousel has more pink in it, less shimmer. You see the difference between those? Okay, so this is more pink. This is much more shimmery. I mean, this one is much glossier. This one you really have to, but they're both glosses. Can you see the two? <laughs> I can't put my two fingers. Okay, so Carousel, Hopelessly Devoted. So this is much more cool, even though Carousel, I've always described as a cool pink because it has that cool shimmer. They're very different looking, I would say. Both could probably be used to cool down a shade, but Hopelessly Devoted is going to give it a lot more light reflection. So the only other one I would say is even somewhat close would be Petal. And that's just because it's a super pale. It's probably the lightest pink that has a lot of pigment in it. Um, because it's a really cool pink. But it is much more pigment. If you really want this to pull pink and you want a light lip and cheek... I would say this with this over it is going to give you that. This with this over it is going to give you like carousel, but with more shimmer. It's I feel like carousel is almost a mixture between these two. It's got less pigment than petal. It's kind of in between, if that makes sense. And because I just talked about Audrey, this one was Audrey. Um, Audrey was a satin though so it was a matte shade but for comparison so you can see how much lighter it is 
this is Audrey, and this one is Hopelessly Devoted. Okay, so it's got, it's very light. It, it looks like an illuminator, okay? It's not at all like um, a typical shade we have. So, application of it is a little bit different. So we're going to put a base of whatever colors we want down first. Now, I think a shade like this looks really cool over darker lip and cheeks um, because this is light and cool. If you put it over something warm, it will cool it down. Obviously, if it's over another cool shade, it's gonna really up the cool factor and give you that shimmer. But it's fun because you can add a shimmer and add a cool shimmer to any shade. And we really don't have a cool shimmer that we're able to use as a topper shade. Our other most shimmery, most shimmery lip and cheek was Sunshine State. And this was a warm shimmer, okay? So this one is warm, this one is cool, this one's more gold. Even La Cienega, which is another one of our most shimmery shades, if I can get it out, but is much more gold. It's warm as well, okay? So it, it, if you like cool shades, this is fun topper, okay? So I'm going to use two of my very favorite fall shades because... I'm in fall mode. My two favorites. Now I've done this, I've shown this combination before, but I think we even named it at one time, Plumstone, something like that. Because Sandstone and Plum are both two of my very favorite falls, okay? Both of them are gorgeous for fall on their own. Obviously Sandstone is one of our warmest shades. Plum is one of our most cool shades. Both fally. <laughs> Both have a lot of pigment down first, and then you can put one of our more glowy shades. Like, I love Royal so much, but I, I know I'm going to top it with this gloss. So, I want pigment. When you want pigment, pick a matte. So, you, I've shown it before where you can mix it on the back of your hand and then dip in. I'm going to be real lazy today, and I'm just going to... Oh, my gosh. I'm going to put them back in my palette, but I'm literally going to just tap one time into each and then I'm gonna press it on, okay? If you wanna make sure you get an equal amount or you wanna see what it looks like, I'd say swatch each one on the back of your hand, mix it together, and then take it from the back of your hand to apply it. Have plum and you're like, oh, it's too cool on me, mix it with sandstone. It is literally one of my favorite combinations. I lied, one of mine was way creamier than the other, so one is older than the other it will be drier so you won't get equal amounts as you pounce in. So I am mixing on the back of my hand until I get the color I want. And then I'm going to, again, tap it on. You can always build it up, pick up more. There you go. Is that not a pretty color combo? Plumstone. Is that what I named it? Plumstone. So pretty. It really balances because you've got the cool plum plus the warm of sandstone. It give, You can make it as light or as dark as you want, but it is such a beautiful balanced color. It makes it much more neutral, but it will still be warmer than nude, if that's your question, because nude is a touch warmer than plum. Um, I feel like this adds a little bit more warmth to than nude does. Let's finally try Hopelessly Devoted. Now, I'm gonna pick up a clean brush so I can make sure I'm just tapping in. I usually don't, this is a blend brush. You can see as I tap in, you can't even see it right? So I'm going to kind of concentrate it. Oh gosh, look, I barely touched my face. Can you see that right here? To make sure it is going to be like an illuminator. And I want to make sure I can use it there and then slowly kind of bring it down so that I get that iridescence across my entire cheek. But I wanted the majority of it right here, almost like an illuminator as well. If you don't know, this originally 
blend brush was originally designed for powder illuminator so you can brush it right there on the top of your cheekbone. Do you see how pretty that is? I didn't apply a whole lot, but I kind of wanted that light in the center of my face and up on the highest points of my cheeks. So I just kind of went in that motion. Can you tell the difference? I mean, I still have a little bit of light over here from probably my sunscreen, but look at that, pa-pow. Now, obviously, if you were to pick it up like with the, oh my gosh, I have a lot of blush on that brush right now from trying to blend it or from trying to mix it. But um, if you were to pick it up with something like this and press it on, it's going to press it on much more heavy and it's gonna add that glow to the entire area really equally, which is also beautiful. So let's try it over, let's try it over here. It's probably, hang on a second. I better clean off my brush real quick because I feel like it is picking up a lot more I don't want one side of my face to have a lot more. Yay for brush cleaner that dries in 30 seconds. I don't even think I wait that long. All right, so now I'm gonna pick it up pretty generously so I, so you guys can see it. Oh my gosh, is that not pretty? It just adds this beautiful sheen. And I don't feel like it cools it down a lot it just the light on it 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 gives a cool light i don't know if that makes sense but there it is just mainly on the top and here it is across the whole thing so hopefully you guys can see that it's so pretty it is so fun to play with for one you guys know how i like to mix my lip and cheeks i'm gonna take this brush and just kind of tap a little bit more right there so contour, lip and cheek, illuminator. We're gonna use it as illuminator as well. I'm gonna use it everywhere I'd normally put light on my face because it can double as both. In my opinion, it works really well as anywhere you wanna brighten and you need one less product. All right, let's do our lips real fast. I wanna do a very nudey, natural lip because I wanna do a little bit more on my eyes. I feel like this blush is not overpowering, but it, it isn't subtle in my opinion. At least it's not on, it's not for me. I'm gonna pick up suede lip liner and go ahead and line my lips with the multitasker first. Okay, now I'm going to use a little bit of Frenchie. Frenchie can wash me out really quick. So I'm gonna put just a little bit of, ooh, that was a lot. See how it kind of washes me out? Okay, I'm gonna top it with Sadie to kind of, for one, add gloss. I don't look so washed out. I feel like it's still a little light. So I wasn't planning on it, but I'm gonna use, literally I just barely touched <laughs> that sandstone. Sandstone can be really dark on me, so I'm just gonna kinda tap it out. I'm just gonna add a little, just to darken it. I touched. You see how the difference that made? Okay, now I like it. <laughs> now, let's see what a little hopelessly devoted will do just to the center. This is one of my favorite ways to use this color is to make your lips look bigger. 
by just putting it in the center and then on your cupid's bow like you would an illuminator to add that light can you see that pretty okay let's do some eyes i'm gonna fill in my brows real quick because that is the longest part and it's super boring but i always use the line brush and oh my gosh did i just just, I think I'm pretty sure I just scraped my favorite eyeshadow with my spoolie. I'm a mess today. I'm gonna use Trust Eyeshadow. Okay, friends, I'm back. I did one eye because I couldn't decide what to do. <laughs> and so I figured it out real quick. And now I'm gonna show you this look. And I did my brows, obviously. So. I was going for a very natural with a touch of fall. So a little summer and fall rolled into one, something not so dramatic you couldn't wear it during the day, but then something fun that would be fun for night and you could totally add to it. So let me show you what I did over on this side and our palette. So let's go. I'm gonna start with the eyeshadow brush and my Magic Eraser shade, which is the closest closest shade to my lid. Mine is Chai, and I'm gonna go ahead and use this as a base, okay? So if you use vanilla dust all over, you don't necessarily need this step, but I sometimes like to do this to give my eye a little bit of definition for me to blend off of, um, especially if I'm gonna do a really natural crease and not use anything too dark. If you have trouble blending your eyeshadows, um, you can try this and it might help you build off of this color. So I'm just gonna go ahead and run it along my lower lash line, even though you really can't see that. Um, it kind of helps blend under my eyes and also sets along my lash line even better. If you ever have like mascara that kind of tends to transfer to your lower lash lid and you're not setting under your eyes, or maybe you are, but maybe you need to set all the way up here because again, our creams can migrate to that area. And then if you have a cream and then you have a mascara on your lashes, that is a creamier formulation. It can kind of stick and then it will transfer. So just using a shade, even if you can't see it, eyeshadows are like setting powders as well. That powder will set that cream there and then you won't have that transfer issue. Anyway, just a quick tip, but um, try all over the lid. Okay. Now I'm gonna go in with just one shade darker, a little bit warmer, and that's Bubba. And I'm gonna use this as my crease color above the hood. Okay, so I wanna be able to see this shade. I still want the eye, the majority of the eye to be very natural, but if I don't add this, I get no definition. You're not gonna see anything because I have hooded eyes. And so this is what's gonna open up my eye and make it look finished. So I'm gonna take it down into the outer corner slightly, just to give me a natural blend. And, and I feel like when I use that try first, Bubba goes on so much easier. Flip your brush over, and then I'm gonna do the same thing and Halo Bubba. Now this one I can actually see, and I love just Bubba under the eyes for literally every day. Okay, so here's where you can do a variety of things. Um, my thoughts were you can either keep it matte and keep it with chai. You can add something very neutral, like you probably would never be able to tell in a million years. I have Peppa on my eye, which is pink. To me, this brings in the summer aspect of it. Um, it adds a little bit of warmth, a touch of light to the eye, but it keeps it really neutral still. So it doesn't look like I'm doing a super all over fall eye. I'm not using super dark, warm colors everywhere. Um, that will kind of add a little bit of that light. Another option, which I also put on this side, which I don't know if you can see, is just adding a touch of 
a shimmery shade like Rome instead. I don't feel like this eye needs a, a lot of shimmer and a lot of light on the lid. Um, so I would stay with a matte or something, just a subtle shimmer. So I use just a touch of Rome. It, this is a good option if you feel like you got too much darkness right there to kind of just add a touch of that light to the inner corner. Don't necessarily think you need both of those, one or the other or neither, and keep it matte with chalk. Okay, so next I'm going to define the lash line, make my lashes look thicker with Black Friday eyeliner. So I'm just going to tap into it and then press on along that lash line. So I'm getting the smallest amount as close to the upper lashes as possible. I don't want it to look like I have thick eyeliner on. I want to keep it as natural as I possibly can. Since I'm also putting stuff on the outer corner, without that, it's going to look off. Okay? So I'm going to set that no matter what I do. If I wear Black Friday eyeliner or any eyeliner for that matter, I set it with a powder so it will make it look more natural, less harsh, and it also sets it. So otherwise you would see black line on the top of my hood in about two hours because that would transfer because my eyelids are hooded and aging and touch my lash line. So I picked cocoa. I wanted something brown, warm, and very natural, and that was my go-to. Um, it's a little bit warmer than my brow color, which is Trust. So now I'm just gonna press that on right on top of it. So that way my lash line does not look harsh, look like I have black liquid eyeliner on or anything like that. Okay, now for the fun part. We're gonna do a slight wing but we're making it as easy as possible, okay? The multitasker brush. This brush makes it so easy because all you have to do is touch your shadow, okay? And this is the color I, this is the first color I placed, and this is pomegranate. I'm just gonna use this edge of my multitasker brush to touch it, okay? Get that color on then I'm going to just kind of press right there on that outer corner and just tap it, okay? Can't see much right now, but it just kind of slightly gave me a wing. Now I'm gonna do the same thing. I gotta look in a mirror, guys, sorry. And I'm gonna do it as close to my lower lash line as possible and just start pressing. Now when I get up here, I'm gonna kinda pull slightly. So it just kinda goes in that direction. So the key is with any wing, is the direction the wing should go should line with the bottom of your eye. So if you start with this lower lash line and then you just slowly close your eye and keep pressing upwards, that is gonna be the, a natural wing, and guess what? It's gonna match on both sides every time because you're just following the natural curvature of your eye, okay? So all I did was kind of use that mat as a guideline. <laughs> I told you guys, now they're starting to get rowdy. Um, that was my cat, in case you didn't notice. Okay, now I'm gonna do the same thing but I wanted to add a little bit more depth and a little bit more, I wanted to add a shimmer. So pomegranate is a matte. Gilded is one of my favorites. Um, and this one, it makes a really cool liner. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm just gonna add a little bit of shimmer and I'm gonna go a little bit along that lash line just so it's all kind of connected. Okay, anytime you get a little crazy, it's just eyeshadow. You can easily clean it up or blend it out. 
Um, it's not a liquid liner that you have to like use a Q-tip and dip it in micellar water or anything like that. It's just a shadow. Shadow is a great way to practice um, and that way you can use any color you want. You can blend it out and it can look a lot more natural for daytime as well. Now I'm gonna just flip it over and use the tiny end back into that cocoa that I used to line the top. Just because cocoa is a little bit deeper, I'm gonna make sure that this right here stays nice and dark. And then I'm just gonna use a touch of it to connect that outer corner. Okay, because I want this kind of blended out and soft. I don't like a harsh line for mature eyes. I definitely recommend using a shadow so you can blur it out so it's not gonna age us, right? So the key with this look is you do not have to go all the way across. All you have to do is if you want more color and you wanna be able to see it a little bit more so, you can go back into pomegranate, I would say, mid keep it soft this brush makes it easy if you use something like the line brush it's going to create a more precise line um but something like that is also an option especially if you want a more precise and if you want more color payoff then i'd recommend using something like the setting spray dipping your line brush in your shadow and then painting it on. Now that one's gonna be a lot more precise, meaning it's not gonna be a lived in smudgy look. It's going, you're gonna be able to see more so if they're not matching up. Does that make sense? This is a really easy way to kind of just add a touch of color and elongate the eye and you can do any color with it. I was just feeling some fall tones. So it's not super fallish, it's not super warm, but I still used some warm tones to connect them. You could totally throw on a more fun shimmery shade on the lid, pick a more neutral shade for the shadow liner color, but you can do this method with anything. Even bright, bold colors like Daba D or something fun like that for an event. Right, so now that we got our eyeshadow done, we're gonna go back into Hopelessly Devoted and I'm gonna use the Multitasker. And then this is gonna be my brightener and look how much light this one reflects. I'm gonna still concentrate it right there on that tear duct and then I'm just gonna take the residual along the highest point, 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 highest part of my brow to highlight um, and this is gonna give more of that icy, but you'll see it doesn't look pink, right? It doesn't look pink on the skin. It just gives that icy glow. Okay, friends, I think that is my cue. My cats are starting to attack each other. I can hear them in the background, <laughs> but I hope that was helpful in showing you a couple of different ways to use Hopelessly Devoted. It's a super fun topper shade, in my opinion. So it's a great one to add to your collection and using it as a topper shade mean, means it's gonna last a really long time because you're not gonna need to use as much. If you're needing a color match, I'm happy to help. My color match questionnaire is in the drop box below the video. Just fill out that link and let me know how you like to wear your makeup so that way I can help you Don't out. Don't forget, Hopelessly Devoted is only available while supplies last or until the last day of September. And I wanted to also remind you guys, if you're not following me over on Instagram, I'm doing a giveaway this month and every month, but this month is a brush collection. You get to curate your own brush collection. Um, so I'm giving that away to one lucky winner. And all you gotta do is follow me over on Instagram and comment on the post for the month of September. The giveaway changes every month, so go check it out. And as always, thank you guys so much for being here and watching. Comment below if you have any questions and I love you guys. See you next week.